Well, hello. Um, let's try something new. Um, I'm gonna be recording this video in real time of me coloring this. Um, this is the card that shows up at the end of my webtoon episodes. Um, and it's not a new season ahead, it's the last season. So I'm gonna uh, bring you the card. <laughs> You tend to mark the line of layer with the color orange. So I always know just by looking at the uh, layer window that this is the line of layer. I don't have uh, the um, uh, the images uh, of what is in each layer. I work with this uh, the smallest I can to save space. Um, I'm currently working on the um, on the Cintiq uh, 13. Okay, let me look for the reference file. Here, yeah. this is a sub navigation tool. Um, here when I can find all the colors just by by putting my cursor here, the cursor transforms into a color picker, and I don't need to press anything for it to to change. So we have uh, all my references here. Prefer this over the uh, I firstly. First, I, I made a color palette with all my characters, uh, but I, I find this to be more useful. They like have better uh, visual reference. Mm. Let's see, we go. Oh, whoops. Well, I first of all I make the the liner layer as a reference layer. It's the lighthouse uh, icon here um, I made a new layer below for the colors then I press B to go to the um, to go to the um, oh, sorry <laughs> to go to the brush um, I cover all the little gaps and when everything is closed, I just feel the I do the same here because my liner tends to have this a lot of gaps. And if I just feel this, well, we all know what happens. The colors just go everywhere. The skin is very fair. Uh, this happens when the saga is having closed. I should can just do this and then erase. Mm -hmm. I put all my colors on the on the same layer. Sometimes it doesn't, like here with the hair, it doesn't go beyond the, the gap. The, and that's because of the, the settings I have set here. Um, here in. Uh, no, wait. Here. <laughs> um, close gap. 
the, that's the, the option that doesn't let the color go beyond the line art, uh, the references line art. I also use area scaling, which allows the um, the color to go a little bit beyond the, the line art and not stop here, so it feels a little bit under the line art. Let me let me show you. This is hiding the line art layer. You know, you see there's a, some line art here, but the thanks to the area scaling, it uh, covered that part. Sometimes with the lines to thin, uh, if you go beyond that, uh, you can choose color as I did by hand, or you can change the area scaling option. Taking, taking. Then let me see here here punch and close gaps there we go and oh my brother choose what color they wear and complete preference And well, this is a test video to see if <laughs> it looks well. Uh, uh, I hope this girl helps someone out there. Uh, consider giving it a like if it helps you. Or if you wanna see more content like this in real time, or comment below if you prefer speed the speed that process. <laughs> I hope my my talking uh, skills uh, get better <laughs> with time. There, we have the guy painted. By the way, if you want, you, you can read my comment, my webtoon. On web, it's a web traditional call for mm -hmm. mm -hmm. straight to read. Okay, we got the base colors, everything on the same layer. Mm. Oh, I forgot the mm. This shining pink on the hair. There. Nice shot of time. Um, I have uh, the. Oh, let me save the file. Save regularly. Please. All the time I lost for now saving the files. Um. Copies. Um, click it. I'm changing the file. You cannot see the window. <laughs> click it. Uh, and okay. Now we are going to jump to the 
shadows um, in a second. There. Um, I have my uh, shortcut for uh, an action that uh, creates a multiply layer. It is F5. When I press F5, it creates a layer on top of the one I'm working on. Uh, it gives it this uh, purple color and it turns it into a multiply layer. Now you cannot see the pop up, but you have all the, the layer types there. So, time for shaving. I usually use this color for shaving. I have all, all my most recurrent colors right here. Um, this is black, white. This is the color I use for the lines. Um, this is a uh, dark blue that I also use for darker lines. And this is the color I usually use for, for shadows. And I use the, this setup in the sheet pan for, for shadow. And it's the same process. Uh, keep the liners as reference layer, and that will uh, make the limits for uh, your lines. And that's basically it. the most important part is uh, to have the reference layer, uh, the line as reference layer, um, and this option mark on the on the bucket tool um, that is um, referred to multiple layer and the lighthouse here apply uh, that's the base I should have started from there <laughs> sorry playing mm, that yeah this is a uh, crucial to have if you want to be able to 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 be able to feel the with the bucket tool and for it not to go beyond the liner. This is basically the, um, the method I use um, to color and shape all my weapon. Uh, 
it gets really easy and, and fast once you you get the hang of it. Okay, that will be the basics mm, of coloring and shading with reference slate. So to to review this, we have um, our subject, <laughs> the lines in one layer, uh, set as reference layer. With this button um, be below we have the line layer. below we have the color layer where we, where we put all the colors uh, on top we have the multiply layer with the shadows it's really basic and simple um, and my personal favorite way to, to color um, and uh, yeah, line up with the uh, reference layer and the bucket tool with these settings. Um, I hope you can read them. Maybe I can do a close up of this later with the magic of it. Um, but yeah, we refer to multiple layers uh, and the lighthouse apply. Uh, to the bucket too. Um, and yeah, for the rest, this is optional and depends on the uh, size of your liner and the color of your liner also and the color you are using. Uh, you have area scaling, uh, that is the amount that will bleed beyond the liner, um, uh, below the liner. Um, you have uh, a close gap, a close gap that you can adjust depending on uh, how big your gaps are. Well, <laughs> um, okay, and that's all for the basics. Uh, then uh, after this, you you can also use, for example, you can block the transparent pixel, thick pixels with this you can pick another color and we can use uh, another tool to modify the the shadows and make it look different or same for the liner or the colors um, but yeah this, this has been the, the basics for Coloring and, and shading <laughs> technique that, that I use. Thank you for watching. Let's see how this goes <laughs> after you eat. <laughs> Wait, no, wrong button. There. <laughs> bye bye.